I'm calling from the law firm of Kilpatrick Townsend Stockton. Um, we represent Apple, and I'm calling to speak with Mr. Rossman. Here we have an A1707 that's not turning on. This is a 15-inch Touch Bar Mac Pro from either 2016 or 2017, and it appears to be dead. So let's open it up and see what's going on on the inside of this MacBook Pro. Okay, put it on the mat, you know, take the screws out of the bottom of it. Now the, there's no more battery attached. And we're going to see how many amps this takes in a USB-C amp meter. I also want to see if it's stuck at 5 volts or if it makes its way to 20 volts. You can get a USB-C amp meter on store.rossmangroup.com. Now it's taking 5 volts at 100 milliamps. So 5 volts means that the USB-C charger is not being told to put out the right amount of power. Remember, if this is a MacBook, it's going to put out 20. If it's a phone or a GoPro, it's going to put out 5. But the machine needs to speak to the charger and say, I'm a MacBook. I need more power. Send me more power. But it's not doing that. And we're going to try and figure out why that is. So we've got to take the board out of the case in order to do that. There's a store story going on. I'm waiting to hear back from this one space. We'll see if the guy sends me a lease. I may have to do a little back and forth negotiating. He wants me to sign a personal guarantee and have a four-month deposit. No, he first said three to six months. I was hoping it would be three months. But when he hit me with the, we want you to personally guarantee the lease uh, yourself and sign a personal guarantee. Oh, you're pushing it, but fine. It's a nice space. But then when they hit me with the, you know, we want a four-month deposit and you to personally guarantee it, that's a bit of a kick in the nutsack there. You, in my opinion, you either get your three-month deposit and a personal guarantee, or you get your four-month deposit but no personal guarantee. I don't really feel like doing both. It's not even a question of whether you can, it just kind of feels like getting kicked in the nuts. And I'm going to be putting a good amount of money into the space to make it usable, and I don't want to do that if I feel like I'm being kicked in the nuts. I don't know if I'm being completely reasonable there, or maybe a little unreasonable. Let you guys decide. Personal guarantee means if the landlord has four rent deposits. Well, that means that if I don't pay rent, let's say that I say my business is bankrupt, buy, and I owe him rent, they can come after me personally. Now, I don't plan on going bankrupt anytime soon. I don't have any plans on doing anything like that, but it's just, you know, it's just less comfortable. Oh, we can come after you personally rather than your company. And there are landlords that push that, and it's, it's, here, the thing is it's okay to push it if it's a good deal. Like, I'll sign that, I'll sign something like that if I'm getting a nice deal. Because, you, you know, the risk goes up, but if the deal is nice, it, it, it makes up for it. But four-month deposit, mm, nah. So let's see if when we unplug everything, if we are still getting the same thing as before. So we were getting 5 volts instead of 20 volts. And let's see what we get now. Five volts, 100 milliamps, off. Let's see what we get here. Five volts, 100 milliamps, on. All right. Here is something that's actually important to learn. Uh, whichever one is the one that does not loop, according to Paul. Paul's the one that taught me this, so... Paul, take a bow for the studio audience for this discovery. The one that's boot looping is the one that actually is the one that is good. The one that does not loop when you're stuck at 5 volts, that's going to be the one that's causing your problems. Now, let's just go over what I mean by that when I say the one causing your problems. What does that mean? Well, there's four charge ports on this machine. And for each charge port, since these are not just normal charge ports, these are USB-C ports, there's going to be a brain. There's a whole, there's a whole ecosystem attached to this. It's a word that P Apple people love. Ecosystem. So we're just going to take a look and dive into what that ecosystem is over here. So let's take a look at each one of these charge ports. So over here, you have a charge port. One, and actually, there's two charge ports on that one connector. So you've got two charge ports over there. And the other side, you have another connector that the other two charge ports are going to go into over here. So see on the desk, you have the charge port, and each charge port is on, there's two charge ports per cable, two charge ports here, two charge ports there, and they go into those connectors. Now, if you click on any one of these charge ports, you'll see that there's a bunch of different lines here on the right side. And some of these are going to be data lines that speak to chips in the board. So let's just take a look at something like this. So what is this for? So you have this data line, CC1, and that is going to speak to a chip on the bottom of the board. Let's take a look at what this chip is, U3100. 
U3100 is going to be a USB-C port controller. USB-C port controller. Now, this chip is going to speak with the charger and say, Hi! Hi, we're doing USB 2 today. Or, hi, we're doing USB 3 today. Or, hi, we're doing DisplayPort today. Hi, I'm an external graphics card plugged in. Hi, I just want to... I, I, I need power from you, but no 5 volts. I want 20. So this is more, much more involved than your standard laptop charge port when it comes to USB-C. Now, the port that wasn't working corresponds to the chip that's on this side of the board. So this, this, this helps me. This is a little tool. Because remember, there's four of these USB-C port controllers on the board. And if even one of them is not working, then none of the ports work. Lewis 2020. Yeah, like I want my life ruined like that. Ha ha. Um, yeah, there's no, nothing better than having to walk around for the rest of your life with armed security guards because everybody hates you. Yay, politics. But no. The way this is going to work is any one of these chips not working, this one, this one, this one, or this one, will cause all the USB-C ports to not work. Now the first thing that we need to do before we even start blaming the chips is see if our main power rail that's required for these chips to work is present. Now on the older MacBooks you need PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. That has to be present. And on these newer machines it's PP3V3 underscore G3 hate. PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. That has to be present for anything to work. So over here on the top of the chip you're going to see a lot of different voltage lines. One of them here it says VIN voltage in. And you follow it back, and it goes to PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. PP3V3 underscore G3 hot can be measured over here right by the chip. So let's see if that's present because that voltage rail is needed to turn on my machine. So we're going to plug this in to the charger. We're going to put the multimeter software on the screen. 3.3. So the voltage is there. It is receiving the voltage that it needs to turn on. Now the other thing you may notice if you're taking a look at this area is that there's corrosion in that area right by what could be a crucial resistor on the lower left corner. So let's take a look on the schematic and see what that resistor is for. It seems like that is 1.8 volts going to ground. It's just a pull down resistor for what looks like a data line. And that's actually not really even an important data line. This is, looks like it's for debug. Yeah, no, so that's odd. What I'm going to guess is that we've got some corrosion underneath the chip itself. So let's give the chip a minor reflow. We're just going to put a little bit of authentic Amtec flux over there. And if we put a little bit of authentic Amtec flux, then we should be good to go regarding reflowing that chip. All right, there we go. We've got some Amtec flux. Let's put our fume extractor on so that we don't inhale that. Eat the board. Be patient. Let the flux heal you. The flux will heal you if you allow the flux to heal you. Yeah. The flux is healing it. All right. All right. Let's see if we get 20 volts now. Now we're getting 20 volts and 1.3 amps taken. It looks like that chip had some corrosion under it, and right after giving that chip a good old reflow with some happy, authentic Amtec NC559V2TF flux that you can get on store.rossmangroup.com, it now works. Look at that. And we reflowed the chip using a quick 861DW, also available on store.rossmangroup.com. And if you need one of those chips just because yours doesn't work anymore and a reflow wasn't able to fix it, we also sell CD3215s, the C00 version, not the BO3 version that's not going to work properly on this board, 
on store.rossmangroup.com. Shilling. That's how we plan on paying for a new store. So, this board is now working. It's, the board is now able to request 20 volts from the charger rather than 5. I'm just going to ultrasonic it to make sure that there's no liquid damage hiding anywhere where I can't see it. Touch up a couple of those points and we'll be good to go. Let's just see what we can do around there. Make that capacitor a happy capacitor. Let's see, is there a pad down there anymore, or is that totally ripped and scraped off? Yep, there's no pad underneath that capacitor anymore. It's been ruined. So let's see if we can replace that capacitor. Hmm, these buttons don't seem to be working right anymore. I gotta get fix the buttons on my microscope camera later. Okay, we're just going to make a new solder pad out of what used to be the trace. See that? Kind of bastardized together as trace there. Whoop! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> 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 nice catch, girl! You want another one? No, we probably should Where'd this dog come from? Customer in the front. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> is best moderator, says JP. She is a quality moderator, and we highly appreciate her work. Now we have some place to actually put that capacitor. I miss Mishu. Yeah. That was the funniest by far. Having a dog. Dead. When we told her your logic board is dead, she went, whoa, And then we said it's a retina, so those are more expensive. No, he, made it, he made it happier. He made it a happier moment. We were all just dying when he was doing that. My fucking wire just moved. You All right, you mother flower. All right, that's it for today. Uh, see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.